Not surprisingly, Hunter Biden has pleaded not guilty. He's entered a plea of not guilty. He faces multiple charges, including tax evasion. And uh, the investigation by Congress into his overseas business dealings, which his father has already have been, been proven to have lied about, uh, is gaining some kind of a political momentum to the point where the pressure has built so much that Hunter Biden has finally agreed to enter depositions before the Congressional Investigating Committee. His mother came out and said it's affecting the family and the grandchildren. My question to her would be, does that include the grandchild who you and your husband and your son tried to deny even existed because he was conceived and born out of wedlock through the antics of your son? You know, the son who was booted out of the Navy for drugs, the son who was involved in substance abuse, the son with the uh, laptop who people signed false declarations from the intelligence community saying that it was bearing all the marks of a Russian hoax. Your son. All of a sudden, when it's Hunter Biden, it becomes a politically motivated prosecution. With Donald Trump, he's a criminal. What crime did he commit? This week, this horrible judge named uh, Engroden in New York was in a situation where you had Letitia James. Letitia James said she ran for the office of attorney general with a political motive to get Trump. He's being with a crime that never happened, claiming that he overstated or overestimated the value of his property assets in order to get loans from banks, overvaluing the collateral. All of the loans were paid back. The banks made absolutely no complaint to anybody. There's no case. There's no victim. This judge agreed that Donald Trump could make his own closing remarks. But once he said, there's no crime here and there's no victim except for me, the banks got paid back. There was never a complaint. And there's other expert testimony in the area of property valuation who testify that he did not overstate the value of real estate assets posted as collateral, that where's the crime? Where's the fraud? Who, who's out of pocket? Nobody is being hurt except him. He's the only victim of a crime that never even happened. What he is is the plainly the victim of a racially motivated and politically motivated prosecution by somebody who should not be allowed to hold office because she entered the office not in the pursuit of justice, but entered office in order to misuse the judiciary as a political instrument to prosecute or to persecute her political enemies. The two standards are unbelievable. Meanwhile, in Georgia, Fannie Willis, we now find that she has been subpoenaed to testify at a divorce trial where she took on a lover in the prosecution of Trump. These people have no scruples, no morals themselves. None. Yet, when they are justly, justly called to give accounts legally and judicially, they become the victims, despite the evidence, which they demand be ignored. But when there's no case, they go against Mr. Trump. You have a woman who failed to gain elected office as the Secretary of State in Maine. She lost elections. But through political connections, she becomes the state secretary of state. There's about 
a hundred or nearly a hundred charges brought against Donald Trump by Smith in Washington, by Willis in Georgia, and by James in New York. If Donald Trump could have been charged with sedition or anything like it, you know they would have done it. But there is a record of him telling the protesters on January 6th to go home. And he offered Nancy Pelosi National Guard troops to protect the Capitol on January 6th. They know there's no basis to charge Donald Trump with sedition. But this renegade Secretary of State in Maine and others in Colorado decide without any charges, without any arraignment, without any indictment, and without any conviction to say he is guilty of, in, of insurrection and of fermenting insurrection. And on that basis, remove him from the ballot as a unilateral political decision non-judicially. This is not an attack on Donald Trump. It is an attack on democracy by a party that falsely claims to be democratic. There's nothing democratic about a party that has 100 superdelegates representing the political establishment who can block the will of the membership of their own party. For instance, the same as you have a right-center populism that has backed Donald Trump. You have a left-center populism that has backed Bernie Sanders. If the democratic will of the people in the Democratic Party, the left progressivists, had been democratically achieved, Sanders would have been politically empowered, but the establishment, Donna Brazil, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, etc., blocked it and gravitated to the extreme left themselves just to protect their power. They didn't care about the ideology. They went to the extreme left themselves only to stop people from going after Sanders in their own party. This is unbelievable hypocrisy, unbelievable corruption, unbelievable war against the Constitution. But the dual standards are unfathomable. That is what is happening. All right. Can I offer a quick follow-up, if you don't mind, Jacob? Go ahead, um, if you remember, there's with overestimating of home prices, business prices, and everything, there's been an actual victim. What happened in the run-up to 2008 is banks were working in collusion with home appraisers to overvalue people home to do refinancing over and over and flip these loans. And so it all just went south, we know, in 2008. And the aggrieved party is the United States taxpayer who had to bail out these corrupt banks to the tune of almost one trillion dollars. Yeah, but that's and, nothing specific. That's nothing specific to the Donald Trump uh, prosecution. Well, he's saying that you know he overvalued his place, which everybody does. Everybody says my house is worth more. The bank's supposed to do their research, but it was actually the banks and the uh, um, overvaluing houses, and the taxpayers got stuck with the bill. Yes, I know, but that was not something specific to Donald Trump. No, but I'm just kind of drawing that there is, that I know there's nothing. I mean, I've sold houses and things like that connected with him, but I'm just saying there is actually an aggrieved party that that did this purposely and was not prosecuted. Sure. Well, unfortunately, but predictably, George Bush supported the subprime lending. There you go. Rhino. But yeah. it was the invention of Clinton and Cuomo, supported by Barney Frank in the House and Chris Dodd and Barack Obama 
in the Senate. Yeah. So they invented it. Now, Bush supported it, but they invented it. People talk about the economic achievements of the Clinton presidency. Bill Clinton inherited the peace dividend. The Iron Curtain collapsed. The Soviet empire imploded. He inherited the peace dividend. Under those conditions, a chimpanzee, a chimpanzee from the Bronx Zoo, could have balanced the budget. A monkey from the zoo could have balanced the budget under those conditions. Secondly, through no achievement of his own, he caught the wave of the high-tech boom, Mm -hmm. which eventually burst. He achieved nothing in terms of economic management except lighting the fuse on the subprime catastrophe of 2008 and getting out of office before it blew up. That is what he did. He lit the fuse and left the Oval Office before the explosion of the bomb that he set the timer on. Yeah, him yeah. I just think it's. I just think it's the funny. Other culprit, the other culprit was Janet Reno, the former yeah. secretary, a former attorney general, who was threatening prosecution of lending institutions if they wouldn't lend money to people who 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 were too high risk based on race. Yeah. Well, she she she's she's dead now. Um, but th- this is what happened in 2008. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Jacob. And, uh, th- that would be the hot take of the week. So make sure you guys get yeah. a hold of that. Mm-hmm.